perhaps the most critical in my mind, and the one that is missed most often by businesses, are what I refer to as the customer metrics. Welcome back. Today we're talking about the e-commerce pyramid of success. You've heard of John Wooden's pyramid of success, but today you're getting Taylor's version. And really the key here is I'm going to give you, if you are a growth marketer or you are leading a marketing team, I'm going to give you the metrics to measure that matter. Let's get started. Here is my pyramid. Boom. The number one thing to understand about the idea of the pyramid of success is that we are building and looking at a hierarchy of metrics. And we must understand as growth marketers or marketers leading teams responsible for online growth is that there is no one metric that will help you to get to the place that you want to go. There is no silver bullet. There is no single indices. We must embrace the complexity and set a series of targets across this pyramid. Here we go. One, two, three, four layers to our e-commerce pyramid of success. At the top of the pyramid, what I like to call the scoreboard is contribution margin. Contribution margin. And it's really important that this is a number, not a percentage. Number, not a percentage. Okay? And we're going to define contribution margin as net sales minus cost of delivery. Okay? Cost of delivery is a term I've coined to replace cost of goods. Cost of goods often just refers to the manufacturing or production cost of the product. But what I want you to include in this calculation is the cost of every dollar, every variable dollar required to get the product to the customer. It's gonna include shipping, it's gonna include your pick pack fees, it's gonna include your payment processor fees. Any number that goes up when the order count goes up is counted in this number. Minus ad spend, okay? This is what I like to call the scoreboard. This is where you win and lose in any given month. In retail, sometimes this is referred to as flow through, dollars that flow through to come to the or to cover the bottom line. And as marketers, it's generally our closest proxy to profit because we don't always control the OPEX inside of an organization. This ability to track this number will hold us to an obligation to ensure the revenue dollars that we're generating are actually accretive to the bottom line. It will align the organization from the product side and the demand planning to the demand realization side to ensure that we are producing the dollars that generate the net outcome that the business desires. Now, I understand that there may be months where this goal is actually negative or the goal is zero or the goal is very small. Regardless, I want to understand uh, the goal at a contribution margin level. Now, really important, this is not enough. You cannot simply have this as a goal on a monthly or quarterly basis because there will be implications to the future revenue if you only track that number. So what else do we need to track? What I look at next are what I call the business metrics, okay? The business metrics layer. This includes order revenue, okay? We're gonna cover that in a second. Spend, MER, and AOV, okay? Order revenue, also referred to often as demand sales, demand sales or order revenue, okay, is the total dollars processed from the customer. So it's basically gross sales minus discounts before returns. It's another way to say it. If you look in your Shopify dashboard, one of the things I hate is that their default view is total sales, which is gross revenue or uh, order revenue minus ad spend or minus returns, excuse me. At a business level, when I'm trying to think about the generative value of my marketing, I want to understand before the returns are taken out. Many businesses will batch returns at variable levels, and on any given day, if you look at net sales, you'll be deceived at understanding the actual generative value of your marketing efforts. Spend is obvious. Well, spend should include every dollar that's intended to generate online sales. 
okay? Every dollar that is spent that is intended to generate online sales. Now, what I'll say is if you spend in a channel where the realization of that demand is going to be distributed across multiple points of distribution, you should amortize the percentage of spend accordingly. If you're going to spend $100,000 on a podcast and your business is 50% on Amazon and 50% on .com, I would apply 50% to each channel consideration uh, for that media dollars because there is no direct response realization of those dollars. Same thing for wholesale or retail. And oftentimes what I see is that all the spend ends, ends up looking, shows up only on the e-com store, but the reality is a lot of spend, the value gets realized at multiple points of distribution, okay? So MER, we're gonna do order revenue over that spend. It's just the measure of those things, okay? And MER is just simply the total generative value of all of the marketing efforts that I'm trying to look at online. There is no right MER. There's only the MER that you plan for, okay? All metrics, this is important. All metrics only matter relative to expectation, okay? All metrics only matter relative to expectation. You must forecast a goal that serves the business outcome you desire and measure your performance against that number. And then AOV, is a way to ensure that you are selling what you intend to with a consideration, obviously, of the SKUs that comprise AOV as a proxy for thinking about contribution margin. You always have to check on the products to make sure, but AOV is a way of thinking about the product mix, okay? The next layer, perhaps maybe the most critical in my mind, and the one that is missed most often by businesses are what I refer to as the customer metrics, okay? These are the numbers that ensure you don't experience the shrinking sponge. Now I want you to go watch that video to understand what I'm talking about. But customer metrics that you need to track include what we'll call NCAC, new customer CAC, okay? And you're gonna have NCAC, or sorry, you're gonna have, excuse me, first order value, FOV over CAC, okay? This is simply a measure of the percentage profit of your first order. And when I say first order value, what I mean is the revenue minus cost of goods over CAC. So you're trying to understand first order profitability on a blended basis. And these are all blended numbers, all at this point. We want to understand repeat rate. Okay, we want to know what percentage of your revenue in any given month is coming from new versus returning customers. Oftentimes people will layer in a third consideration, which is new, reactivated, and returning. So they'll divide their customers into active and lapsed, and they'll have goals around those. But I wanna know the percentages. If you track three categories of customers, track all three percentages. But I wanna know the composition of my revenue in any given month. We look at AMER, okay? This is new customer revenue over ad spend, and then total new customers or just new orders, okay? This layer ensures that you are not over depending on squeezing value out of your existing customer base to meet an efficiency goal, to meet a margin goal. New customer revenue is more expensive than existing customer revenue. In the short term, the way to maximize MER is to increase the amount of revenue that comes from existing customers, but it will hurt you in the future because all revenue that gets brought forward from existing customers is just a trade on future revenue. It very rarely actually increases the total realized value of a customer. So customer metrics, they protect future outcomes, okay? That is the goal with customer metrics. They ensure you win today and tomorrow. If you miss here and win here in the short term, there will be a consequence the following month. It's really important to understand that on a curve of customer value, in almost every case, in almost every case, okay, the realization of customer value over time looks like this. So if this is 30 day of this, let's say that's one month, two months, three months, most of your existing customer revenue or lifetime value of a customer is realized in the first 30 days. Okay, so this first 30 days is when you realize the vast majority 
of the value of a customer, which is not necessarily intuitive for a lot of products. You'd think, oh, if I was selling shoes, then that may not be true. And what happens is for uh, apparel brands or fashion brands that have seasonal releases, you'll get what I call the smiley face effect where you'll actually see it come back up, but it'll still very uh, rarely, if ever, reach the value of the first 30 days. So in any given month, your ability to acquire new customers has an immediate effect on your revenue projection for the subsequent month. Customer metrics protect future outcomes, okay? The final and least important part of the pyramid, but yet the one that we marketers obsess about the most are the channel metrics, okay? Channel metrics do not put dollars in your pocket. They are proxy metrics. They are intended to be indications of what these are actually telling you. And there are sets of channel metrics that I care about more than others. And this is gonna be a bit controversial, but I care about in-platform click-only ROAS. That is what I measure in Google AdWords. It's what we use to make decisions in a Facebook ad account. There is no third-party attribution. There's no last-click Google Analytics. In-platform, click-only ROAS. And the key is, I'll make a note, that matches my optimization setting. In other words, and this is really the point, I have to measure what the platform is using to allocate my dollars. I have to align my measurement with the platform's optimization, okay? If I am using any third-party tool, I am asserting a relationship between the past indicated performance and the future decisions of the platform. There will not be a relationship between those things. An easy way to look at this is go look at the correlation between your last click ROAS and future Facebook ROAS. It's extremely small. You need to make decisions based on data in the same way that Facebook's gonna make decisions on your data. Imagine you're running a CBO, okay? And you have three ad sets, campaign budget optimization, and you have three ads, okay? And you have set this up to allow Facebook to optimize against a specific target, whatever. Let's just call it a two, two X. And you have uh, your cost cap on, And what you have here is you have a uh, performance that indicates like maybe this is at a one, this one's at a two, this one's at a five, okay, on Facebook. But in your third party, you have the opposite for whatever reason, five, one, two. Where are your dollars going next? Okay, they're gonna go, they're in a flow to here, right? It doesn't matter that the tool is telling you that this one's a five because that one, it's important to understand and Facebook will even tell you that historical ROAS does not equal future ROAS, okay? This is why media buyers making decisions in ad accounts based on historical data is such a terrible idea is because we assert a relationship between the past and the future that is not how Facebook allocates the dollars. The signals that they're using go far beyond the data that has occurred across an ad in the previous period of time. So they call this the breakdown effect often where there's a process by which an ad may have an experience that looks like this where uh, ROAS goes down and then up over time. And if you make a decision here, all you've paid for is the poor performance. So when you assert something about the past, that is not like the future, you have a problem. And so what you need to understand is how, what the platform is seeing, whether it's limited or not, is inconsequential. You need to understand how your dollars are gonna be spent and make decisions campaign versus campaign based on Facebook's allocation or Google's allocation based on the data that they have available to them. It's also why it would be wholly insufficient to depend on these alone. So 
I need to have in-platform click-only goals because I have to set cost caps. I have to make decisions in the ad account and that's how Facebook's going to spend my dollars. Then I need to have track total blended new customer CAC to ensure I have first order profitability at the target I want. That I'm getting the number of new customers I need to make sure my repeat rate doesn't get out of whack and I drain my sponge. I need to understand my demand sales. How many dollars am I generating? The efficiency of those dollars of my total marketing efforts. And at the end of the day, I measure my scoreboard on how many dollars I flowed through to cover the bottom line. I'm going to forecast an expectation of every one of these metrics every month. And then I'm going to assign them into layers of the organization in a cohesive fashion that makes us watch, track, and build all of them. So right now, drop a screenshot of our statless.io revenue dashboard. And what you'll see is if you scroll down this slowly at the top, you have these metrics right here. And then the next layer is customer metrics. And then the next layer is channel metrics. We build our dashboards to follow this exact pyramid of success. And I promise you, if every month you hit this number, you will win the game. And the rest of these indices help to ensure that you win today and tomorrow. So as a marketer, if you can track, follow, and record outcomes against each of these indications, you will reach success. Pyramid of success. THs. Thanks, John Wooden, for the inspiration. Good luck.